702. This is the work session for mayor and council, and it's going to be followed by a closed um, close session um, following uh, right after this meeting. Um, so call to order. I, I think there does uh, Luke, Jared, and Jimmy are all present, and uh, myself. So we have full quorum. Um, I would like for us to review the agenda at this moment. And uh, Jimmy, can you do me a favor? Can you please uh, read the agenda as it stands? Uh, yes. Um, call to order, number two, review of agenda, five minutes. Three, closed session summary, August 24th and July 17th. Presentation of October 5th legislative legislative meeting minutes, uh, presentation on building application, 4213 Mount Rainier Avenue. That should be, uh, that's, that needs to be corrected. Uh, it's not Mount Rainier. Uh, 3615 Rhode Island Avenue, uh, discussion on a list of projects for ARPA funds, 40 minutes, scholarship committee, 15 minutes, uh, police advisory review board, 10 minutes, uh, status update of Potts Hall, 10 minutes. Outdoor fire pits, 10 minutes. Proposal to go under closed session. Uh, adjournment. Okay, thank you, Jimmy. So you guys have heard the agenda. Uh, Council, um, is there any additions uh, or edits to the agenda? Please let me know. Um, I'm going to make only one addition. It's going to be just an update on upcoming events for the city. And so um, if everybody's in agreement, we'll go ahead and add that. I see no more than five minutes being added. It's just basically telling uh, residents where the upcoming events from here to December. Uh, so move the agenda as, as, a, as amended. Thank you, Jimmy. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. <laughs> you guys are alive. Sorry, sorry, guys. It's only a long <laughs> agenda. <laughs> You're like, what? Uh, so the, it's been properly moved by uh, Jimmy and second by Luke. Um, any objections? Hearing that there's none, we uh, we have adopted the agenda as amendment. So um, mine could be the last item, uh, Elisa, right uh, Melissa, right before uh, the closed session. Um, okay. Thank you so much. So we're going to be moving on to item number three, uh, closed session summary. And this is for the closed sessions being held on August. Don't move the agenda. Okay, move it up <laughs> on oh, August. Okay. Uh, that's fine. You could put the screen out because I was, there you go. Let me switch my format so I can see it better. Okay, uh, closed session summary for um, August 24, 2021 and 7, 17, 2021. And we'll be reading both of them into record. And this will put us up to date with, um, with the closed session summaries being read. Um, Melissa, can you move it down so the summaries could be read? Right there. Thank you so much. Um, and this, uh, these are going to be the last two summaries that are going to be read by me. <laughs> uh, Jimmy. <laughs> I can read it. That's you, that know. you want me to huh? read it? You want me to read it? Yeah, read it because they're they're reading beautifully. Go ahead, read uh, it. Thank you for whoever wrote them up. Uh, closed <laughs> session summary sheet to be read into record. Okay. Uh, close under annotated code three dash five oh five B one. According to the annotated code of Maryland, the mayor and city council of the city of Mount Rainier, Maryland, have the statutory authority to close a session under general provisions. Article 3-305B for the reason of section one. Uh, one, quote, to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, performance, evaluation, of appointees, employees, or officials of whom this public body has jurisdiction, any other personal matter that affects one or more individuals. Those who voted go to close exception. Uh, motion made by Jimmy Tarlow, uh, seconded by Scott Cecil, Unanimous vote to go in closed session five to zero. Unanimous, unanimous uh, uh, of elected office in attendance. It was unanimous by the people in attendance 
Benitez, Tala, Stolzfus, Cecil, and Chesek. Those are the tenants, including the city manager. Action taken, no votes were taken. Please see relevant notes. Uh, topics discussed to discuss personnel with city manager. Uh, then there was a vote to adjourn the closed session made by Luke, seconded by Jared, and then it was a unanimous vote to adjourn five to zero. That's a one. Do we have another one? Yeah, we have another one, the July 17th. July 17th, 2021, time 9.35 a.m. Um, in person following uh, COVID protocols, uh, closed on the annotated code 3-305B1, uh, according to the annotated code of Maryland, um, to, this, uh, to close the session under general provisions, Article 3-305B for the reason subsection 1, quote, to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, a performance of evaluation of appointees, employees, or officers over whom this public body has jurisdiction, any other person matter that affects one or more specific individuals. Those who voted to go in a closed session, uh, motion moved by Chesick, seconded by Stolzfus, unanimous vote five to zero. Uh, people in attendance, Benitez, Tarlow, Stolzfus, Cecil, Chesick. Uh, those in attendance also were slave and management consultants. Uh, no votes were taken. Um, topic dis uh, discussed. Uh, to, uh, to conduct interviews for the city manager. And those who voted to adjourn closed session, Tarlow mo uh, moved the motion, Chesick seconded, unanimous vote five to zero. Thank you so much, Jimmy. And the only thing I would like to add is like the August 24 was done virtually by WebEx and the uh, July 17 one was done in person at City Hall. Um, so that is the closed session summaries, um, and it's just a summary. So having them read, we're going to move on to item number four, presentation of October 5th, 2021 legislative mini minutes. Mayor and council received the legislative minutes for the October 5th, 2021 from city clerk, uh, council, um, you are being presented the minutes. We don't have to go, uh, point by point here. Um, I will ask for you guys to review them. And if there's anything that needs to be edited or changed, please um, submit it to uh, Melissa before um, Friday of this week, latest Wednesday of next week if we need to. So that way they are ready for approval if that's what we choose to do on our next legislative, ascent, um, legislative session. So uh, Melissa, are the minutes right there? So that will be on record that they were turning to us. We don't have to see them. Okay, there they are. So um, review them and if any changes need to be made, um, please submit them to uh, Melissa, copy the rest of us. We don't have to comment on it, just like submit them in so that way we, we're not making all the same changes at once. Okay, is that um, a fair assessment, Council? We usually have to, wait, I used to do it. We used to move the uh, minutes, do you actually move the minutes uh, and any uh, amendments done by the end of this week or do you actually just present them and we move on? So this is just, she's just presenting them. Um, so you could make changes, like I say, between um, by Friday, send her whatever additions need to be made. She will present them to us next week, uh, ready for us to um, vote for them in the legislative session. Uh, thank you. Yeah, because we don't vote in this session, remember? So she's just acknowledging the minutes are in front of us. We'll review them. We don't have to read them aloud here. I mean, they could be the final uh, version could be read uh, at the legislative session. OK. All right, moving on to uh, presentation. This is going to be a presentation and discussion on building applications uh, for 4313 Mar Rainier Avenue and 3615 Rhode Island Avenue. So Mayor and Council will discuss the building application for 4313 Mar Rainier Avenue and um, 3615 Rhode Island Avenue. Um, this is a presentation. We do not need to vote on this as it's not a legislative session. And um, Alma, you are here, correct? Yes, good evening, Mayor and Council and residents and owners. Um, we're here today 
to do a presentation on two properties that have submitted their building permits um, that were approved by the county already. Okay, thank you. Is there any flags on your end um, from code, Alma? Um, no, not at all. Everything have been, has been submitted for both properties. Um, and um, I think we, we do have both um, owners um, with us this evening. So uh, if you, you present want to them, please. Support. Yes. Uh, if we want to start with um, 40, uh, 4213 Rainier Avenue, um, definitely uh, the owner has the floor. Hey, good evening, everybody. My name is John Doss, and I have online with me my business partner, Rocio Palafox. Um, our company is Property Improvement Enterprises. And uh, what we do is basically either renovate or build new homes that are smart and sustainable. Um, for the um, Rainier Avenue project, uh, we're looking at adding some additional livable square footage by finishing the attic, um, adding a bathroom, and actually installing central air. Um, we'll also be upgrading uh, the existing bathrooms. There, there was one and a half existing bathrooms and renovating the kitchen and opening up um, the, the floor plan on the main level so that you can uh, see all the way through the house, uh, put in a large bay window because there's a nice backyard to to be able to look out in the back of the property. Um, th that's basically our thesis is to add livable space to increase the value of properties. So either, you know, finishing basements that aren't finished or refinishing attics, um, you know, or putting dormers on or even adding a, an addition. For this one, we're not actually expanding the footprint. Uh, we're just finishing space within the property. Perfect, thank you so much. Alma, just as a point of clarity, this um, this one has been approved by the county. It is not a variance, correct? So therefore, no need to go to sign review board. No, not at all. All right, okay. perfect. So, council, um, I'll call upon you guys if you have any questions for uh, Mr. Uh, Das or uh, our interim co director. Um, please let me know. So we will start with um, War One, uh, Jimmy, followed by Luke and followed by Jared. Go ahead, Jimmy, the floor is yours. I'm, I'm a little renewed to the process. So what? why do we have to approve a permit that the county has approved, uh, which does have a variance? Is that something new in the code? No, not mm -hmm. at all. So this is actually part of our ordinance uh, on chapter seven, that any, um, any uh, project approved by the county that's over fifty thousand dollars needs to be presented to mayor and council for at least three minutes um, before they can uh, commence their work. But we don't have to vote on it. No. Just, mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We're not voting, Jeannie. Me. This also gives opportunity for the neighbors to know what the project is, and that way, if we have any questions, we go ahead and tell them. We get to meet who's the person doing the work in the home. And at the same time, we usually like have a key points that we hit and I'm not going to say which are because I knew Luke is next and I'm sure he's going to hit quite a few of them. But do you have any questions regarding this project itself, Jimmy? Aside well, from that? Okay. Luke, you're next. Well, this last thing, yeah. can we unapprove something that the county has already approved? And what, no. what, so we, we don't have any say, just it's just a presentation no. for the public. Correct. Yeah. So unless it's a various involved, Usually the design review board will make a recommendation to us and then we we uh we won't get the presentation and then we vote to approve um that recommendation from design review board. Then the city sends a letter saying like this is what the recommendation from design review board is. We are we are buying by it, council met this day and we are we voted to support it, and then we send a letter in the documents. But that's the reason why I clarified if this was a bit a variance issue to make sure we were clear on what we're what we're also addressing and not just for us but also for the public to know why there's some of them that we approve and some of them that we don't okay yep. thank you thank you jimmy luke the floor is yours thank you mayor um you know sort of addressing jimmy's question a little bit 
Um, one of the things we like to do with um, having this come before the mayor and council is just to remind folks of some of the requirements in the city. Um, construction should not start before 8 a.m. Um, I think it has to be over by 8 p.m. every day, um, which I'm sure Elma's told you, but um, you don't want neighbors calling code and sending the police out or code out to because you're constructing things early. Um, it doesn't look like you're gonna do anything to the outside, um, but just remember that the city does have a, um, an urban forest code. So um, no cutting down trees that are um, bigger than a, a certain width, um, you know, protect the roots of the big trees. So make sure you're not cutting into that. Um, and I know you're doing some basement work there, but not sure if you're gonna be moving dirt on the outside. Just try to keep it from um, away from the sidewalks or in a, in a way that won't um, send a bunch of uh, uh, clay down the sidewalk if it happens to rain while construction's going on. Those are the things that I think residents are most concerned about and appreciate y'all coming here and um, presenting this to the mayor and council and um, appreciate the work you're doing. Good, good luck with, with all that work. Thanks. Thank you, Luke. Uh, Jared? Yep, I uh, don't, don't want to waste time repeating what Luke just said, but um, again, thanks for bringing this before the council. Um, and just a reminder on all the items that uh, Luke mentioned, um, this is important for just compliance with the city and um, being mindful of uh, the neighbors um, nearby and the impacts as well. So thank you very much for coming in. Appreciate it. So um, you have heard from council. Uh, thank you for coming. Um, if you have any questions, please reach out to um, Alma from Code. If you're in doubt, reach out to to Alma in Code. Rather be safe than sorry. And yeah, so if there's any uh, tree trees being hurt um, or starting work early in the morning, um, your, the consoles usually, um, including myself, receive calls um, that early in the morning. <laughs> So please, please be aware that we do have um, we do have neighbors that love their trees, including all of us. So the the better um, the better love you are to the trees in the community overall, um, the the more welcoming the atmosphere is for all of us. So, uh, Mr. Dallas, thank you so much. Um, do you have any questions for our council? Um, no. So th there is a tree that overhangs the property line. Um, so if we want to have somebody come and take a look at it, uh, who, who do we go through? Is it Alma to figure out uh, if we do need to trim it back some? So the Alma? Um, yeah, thank you, Mayor. The person that you will be contacting is Rocio Latore. Latore, she's our tree liaison. I am going to email you the information tomorrow morning so that you can have that and have her contact information. She would be the one um, to address any concerns or questions about trees. Okay, great, thank you. Because our neighbor had already asked uh, if we could do something. I said, well, sure, while we're here, um, we just got to go through the proper procedures. Yeah, sure. perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah, uh, uh, Rocio is also our tree expert, broach side expert, as well as our interim um, public works director. And we're in Dow protect the tree uh, with barriers around that that is like the, the the key element so even when you if you're putting fencing outside to um to you know if you're moving stuff like that make sure it's not ruining um the roots of the tree as well okay perfect so alma thank you so much mr Doss, thank you so much for coming to us and um once the project is done we you know we're always happy to come in and take a look and 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 see what uh, changes have happened in the, in the city and the, in the housing as well, okay? We'll invite you all to our open house. Thank you so much. Okay, Alma, who is uh, the next uh, person here for uh, the next property? Sure, so next we have property 3615 Rhode Island Avenue. Um, in this, uh, the owner is Mr. Christopher Atiles, and I think he is, um, present with us also, so he can speak um, regarding the project. Thank you, uh, Ms. Rallis, um The floor is yours and your mic is muted at this point. There you go, welcome. Thank you. Um, my name is Christopher Adels and uh, I'm the president of TriTech Services. Uh, we are a commercial cleaning company and uh, we clean uh, facilities throughout Maryland and Washington, D.C. Uh, 
mostly uh, commercial buildings and, and large residential uh, complexes. Uh, we are moving our offices from uh, Beltsville to um, to Mount Rainier, and uh, we purchased the building, and we are just uh, you know beautifying the building uh, so that it'll be uh, it'll be a comfortable place for our employees to work, and uh, and planting flowers outside, and and we have intention of uh, of making the outside beautiful as well, um, just so that we have a nice office environment. Okay, thank you so much. Um, Alma, anything on this property? Um, so this property is right exactly at the corner of 37th and Rhode Island, right in front of uh, uh, the St. James Catholic Church. Um, okay. And they're going to be, everything that they're going to be doing is renovating the inside of the property, um, like Mr. Um, Atiles um, mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, I know that they will be placing also the business and the information for the business um, application and everything was also um, given to one of his um, assistants. All right, perfect. Thank you. Um, we will start with uh, Jared, um, Jimmy, and then Luke. Jared, any questions um, or comments for the resident? I mean, for the business owner? And all, sorry, I'm rotating my head so I can <laughs> look at that. Um, in case you wonder what I'm doing. Yeah. Nope, I don't think so. Just thanks again. Thanks for coming in and uh, presenting before before the council. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you so much. And I see also uh, Design Review Board uh, member Brian Nettler has joined as well. Welcome, Brian. Okay, so uh, Jimmy, Luke, no comment. I mean, no, no, nothing to add. <laughs> okay, perfect. Uh, Luke, uh, thank you for coming and doing business in Mount Rainier. Uh, we appreciate your your you coming in um, and helping to beautify uh, one of the buildings there along Rhode Island Avenue. Um, same spiel about eight a.m. and eight p.m. Make sure you're not doing work before and after those hours. Um, and uh, it looks like everything you're going to be doing is mostly on the inside. Um, but uh, just thank you for doing business here and re re rehabbing one of the places along our, our Route 1 corridor. Appreciate that. Thank you for welcoming us. Perfect. Uh, thank you. So um, we will open the floor up to the, to the residents. If you need to make a comment, just uh, put something on the chat. And uh, in the meantime, um, definitely thank you. Um, the buildings definitely has this very good structure uh, bones and seeing all the various changes that are gonna be made, um, it, it definitely like highlights, you know, but it feels like a big reborn of Rhode Island. There's been a lot of uh, great work in Rhode Island. So we're looking forward to seeing just, um, you know, what this is gonna look like and be. Um, so um, anything on Facebook or on the chat? Melissa? No. Okay. Perfect. Um, and same thing, if, if in doubt, reach out to Alma. Uh, Ray, and rather be safe than sorry if you have any questions, concern. If they're trees, we love them, protect them. Um, even if it's a little tree that you're like, it might be close, put a barrier around it so that way nobody messes with it. And the noise ordinance is very important. Um, and if there's any changes on the plans you submitted to the county and to the city, please immediately notify the county and the city um, so that we follow through and that goes for anybody that does business in the city. So Mr. Alice, thank you so much for coming and we look forward to uh, the various editions. And as we told um, the previous guests, um, let us know when you're open uh, for an open house. We would love to, um, to, to look at it. Okay. Oh, fantastic. Thank you for having me. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, everybody, moving on to the next item on the agenda. Um, discussion on list for projects for ARPA funds. Mayor and Council will discuss the list of potential projects for the open, uh, for the ARPA funds. So if a little bit of, of uh, backup information, we have had a couple meetings, uh, both in person, three in person and one virtually at this point. And we've had this topic addressed, I believe at least in two meetings including this one at least 
um, to say that is not to say that this is the end of the conversation, but it's important for us to have it up front so that way we could start, we could continue the discussion and there are going to be other opportunities to also uh, make comments. Um, I know a couple of you guys have like sent emails and reach out to us or speak to us personally. Um, so that was great. We also have uh, reached out to the elementary schools. And I know at least uh, Mount Rainier Elementary, uh, Luke um, uh, gave a presentation. I was there as well about ARPA and invite our residents to the meeting. Uh, we are going to be reaching out to Thomas Stone for the uh, same thing. So that way um, the community is also hearing from us. So what you have in front of you are the um, ARPA suggestions for Mount Rainier, the it says October 17th status. Um, so Jimmy, I'm going to give, um, I'm going to start with you. The floor is yours. Uh, my understanding is we, did, do we have the comments back? I'm not looking at the screen. Uh, my understanding is we got some comments back from our consultants about some of these projects. Wouldn't it be uh, good if we start out with the, some of the comments first before we uh, go into the list? Yeah. So, Melissa, do you have, have an the... ability? Hold on. Do you have the ability to put the list up on front, uh, Melissa? We have Mr. Himmler here, don't we? Also. Yeah, I'm, I'm here, Mr. Tarlow. And if I, I mean, I can share our response. If it, if I can get share screen, I can pop it up and, and give you our our tentative responses to, to the list. Perfect. Thank you. Melissa, can you, um, can you, whoever's uh, MRTV or whoever's conducting the meeting, can you guys uh, allow share screen uh, for, um, for, for Thomas? Tom, could you do it yourself? I think you have the list and you have some opening statement for the mayor and council, please. Yeah, I can share the list. Um, um, and then I'll, as we go through the discussion, I'll talk about um, some other elements that, that may be important for you to consider. Uh, so give me one second. I can share if you can. Okay, got it. Good. Yes. That's the picture everybody wanted to see. Yeah, I wanted exactly. to start with that handsome, with that handsome person first. So, <laughs> so can you all see this? Now, can you uh, make it bigger? Okay, a little more. Not okay. Not big enough. Yeah, uh, Jimmy, you could also make it bigger on your screen or whoever's watching. If you're in your phone or no, the, you, you your laptop, you can make it big as well. No, I'm making no, up because I'm on my phone and I can make it big. Uh, yeah, but yeah, I'll, whatever. That's okay, fine. either way. So go go ahead, Tom. Uh, do you have okay, some? So, you so, have a presentation. Go ahead. Yeah. So we so we 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 we've tried to you know um, you know put together some some preliminary uh, responses to some of these things. Um, so I'll go through this list, but then at, at the end, if you can indulge me. Uh, on a couple other things, uh, we want to make sure that you kind of focus on in a broader, higher, higher level sense too, as you as you go through this, this process. So basically, a list of the stormwater projects. They're you know, basically they're eligible under the the rules, provided they are basically uh, meet the eligibility requirements of of the EPA's Clean Water State Revol Revolving Fund. So each of these projects that were on the list, and we didn't list them all, but basically. We'll have to sit down with Mr. Kamali and, and, and kind of walk through those and, and make sure that they that they fit. But basically what Treasury has said is you need to follow the guidelines of the, the EPA program. And in particular with the stormwater, it's the Clean Water uh, State Revolving Fund requirements. So you see here a couple of examples of what would be typically eligible product projects under that program that traditionally you know would go through the state state process, state state program. You know, it's your traditional pipe storage treatments. Uh, systems, green streets are included, uh, rainwater harvesting, collection, storage, distribution, bioretention, those type of things are typically are examples of what would be eligible projects. So with the list, we'll just need to go through those, but at a high level, if it's a traditional stormwater type project that you would typically, a government would typically do, more than likely it's going to be eligible. Um, but again, we just need to kind of look at each of those projects 
uh, separately. Uh, our fees, yes, that's part of cost of consultants are, are, are to support the oversight and management of the American Rescue Plan Act funded or eligible uses. Um, Joe's Movement Emporium proposals, we just, we, did, we didn't really have any information on specifically what they're proposing to do. Um, so once we get some more information from uh, Mr. Kamali on what exactly they're trying to do under these, well, the first two in particular, then we'll be able to pro provide a little more guidance to you. Uh, their stormwater project, it's kind of same as above. We just need to understand what it is to see if it would be eligible under the, the clean water program. Uh, crisis management staff, in conversation with Mr. Kamali, it seemed like it was uh, to provide mental health services. If it is, those are eligible uses of the American Rescue Plan Act funds. Um, public restrooms, that would not be, as far as what we understand it to be, uh, that uh, that would not be an eligible use as it stands now, because there's not, doesn't seem to be a connection to mitigating or responding to COVID-19. Wi-Fi, this is one. We just, again, need a little more information of what exactly you're contemplating, um, but, but theoretically, since the FCC basically considers, you know, wireless technologies is a broadband type of connection, it's likely that it would be, but as long as you're expanding broadband would meet the other kind of criteria that's been out there from Treasury, which is in particular um, focusing on households and businesses that were either unserved or underserved by current wire, wired lines. And, and, it, and it gets you to addressing those who don't have these speeds up, download and upload speeds that you see. Uh, it's, um, you know, so if it, once we get a little more understanding of what potentially this idea is, it, it more than likely would be. Uh, just of, as a note, Treasury is really encouraging uh, the, the recipients to really focus on projects that achieve last mile connections in particular. It doesn't mean that you can't focus on non last mile connections, but, but they're really trying to stress to make that final connection to get people access. Um, traffic calming, it's not eligible unless it's under, um, the city has incurred a revenue loss as treasury defines it. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that more later, um, uh, at the end, but, but basically road projects, unless it's a, you have a revenue loss, or they're directly related to doing a stormwater project. For example, if you go in and you know have to tear up a road or parts of a road to 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 do the stormwater project, the resurfacing and, re and rebuilding that part back where you dug into the road that that would be ineligible. But just a, a, a random or general road project by itself would not be eligible unless you had a revenue loss. Uh, parks. Uh, accessibility for parks for individual with disabilities. Um, investments in parks and other recreation, uh, outdoor recreation are eligible uses because they're basically addressing uh, a particular um, uh, need of impact to communities, which is you're encouraging healthier living environments and outdoor recreation. So that would be an eligible uh, use. Rental assistance, and we may have talked about this last time when, in, our pre in our discussion, it is an eligible use and it can include um, you know, utility assistance as well. But as we note here, sorry, there's um, there's a, almost $500 million the state of Maryland has for emergency rental. Prince George's says 85 and some change plus more coming, but that just as a note. Uh, small business assistance, yes, assistance to businesses impacted by COVID or eligible uses. It can range from covering revenue losses that they may have incurred due to business closures or implementing, if they need funds to implement uh, additional COVID mitigation measures such as, you know, maybe outdoor uh, dining spaces or, or putting in uh, barriers uh, in, in, in their establishments. But it also can in include technical assistance counseling, uh, ranging in, especially as it relates to business planning needs. Um, Reimbursements for lost revenues to the city, it's its not as what you and I may think as a traditional revenue loss. It's a treasury formula that's not really 
Um, it's based on more of a projection of where they think you should be relative to what you collected. Um, if you do have a revenue loss, and we're going to work with Mr. Kamali and his team, um, there is a lot more flexibility if you have a revenue loss as Treasury defines it, um, because it, then it becomes essentially you can provide whatever you can do to provide government services. So as you see, it's this a small sample list. You can start doing maintenance of infrastructure. Just general infrastructure doesn't have anything to do with COVID. You could build a new road. You could build a new public building if you wanted. You can do you know health services. You can hire additional police officers, purchase public safety equipment. All those things that you typically would do as a government, you could do that if you have a re up to the amount of the revenue loss that you have. Uh, the one caveat is, is that, you know, the costs have to be incurred after March 3rd, 2021. So you, so you can't go backwards prior to that date and, and, and try to reimburse yourselves under this provision. Legal assistance to residents facing eviction. Yes, legal aid uh, is, is one of the eligible uses of the CL, CLFRF funds. Uh, support for home ownership for low-income families. Uh, within designated... Um, HUD designated qualified census tracts. Um, Treasury presumes that you, any the funds for house, affordable housing opportunities is an eligible use. Um, you do have a few um, areas that are designated as QCTs, and I'll show you that um, in a minute. Um, but you could also, even outside of QCTs, you can still provide affordable housing opportunity type programs, but you just have to justify how specifically the pandemic has disproportionately impacted that area or population um, uh, or household that you're that you're using the funds to benefit from. So there is a uh, there is a way to do it outside of QCTs, but you just, you know, we just have we'll work with you to to justify, provide a justification. Treasury hasn't given any information what that justification needs to look like, but it's basically, you know, showing more, more than likely that the population area, the area of the population that you're trying to uh, help um, was impacted, which is we know that a lot of lower income households have been dramatically impacted by COVID. So it, it should be an easy nexus to, to check the box on that one. Um, bonuses for frontline workers. Um, essentially premium pay and, and, and technical speak. It's an eligible use for eligible employees. Um, Treasury does emphasize uh, a need preferably to prioritize uh, lower income workers to, to be beneficiary. It doesn't mean that you can't provide it to non-lower income workers. Um, there's various sectors that are eligible if you choose. It doesn't have to be solely the city's employees. You can provide grants to private sector um, employees or private sector entities who have uh, essential workers in these in these uh, basic categories. Um, outdoor recreation, equipment of parks, we talked about that earlier with the uh, uh, improvements for in parks for uh, individuals with disabilities, the same, same rule kind of applies that are eligible uses. Um, the Mount Rainier Elementary School proposal, expanding outdoor classrooms and learning gardens. Again, this would fall under similar to the affordable housing discussion. You know, if it's in QCTs, it's essentially a presumption that 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 it's eligible. Um, outside of QCT, again, you just have to provide justification or determination on how that population is being served by making such an investment. Um, stormwater, we've talked about that. We just have to assess what the school this the elementary school is trying to do. Um, math tutoring, same as kind of up above with the outdoor learning. It's um, uh, basically extended learning type programs, tutoring, they are eligible uh, uses. And again, it would either if it's in a QCT is by presumption or we, again, you know, justification. Uh, requirements as we talked about before. Improving air filtration, um, ventilation improvements, you know, if it's an HVAC you know, replacement type project or improvement in the air, um, 
this would be this would be eligible because it's essentially is what the treasury calls a congregate setting so where there's a lot of people in a play in certain places so school is one of those uh, type locations so this would be an eligible use thomas stone's proposal the outdoor learning uh and outdoor classrooms similar response as we had to the mount rainier elementary school same with math tutoring air filtration um crossing guards Treasury really primarily focuses on or allows uh, use of the uh, ARPA, ARPA funds for public safety services that are really focused on substantially dedicated to mitigating or responding to the COVID-19 pandemic or are a part of preventing and or responding to a crime in a community. So crossing guards do not seem to kind of fit this criteria. This criteria. We do note though you know, the crossing guards are employed by Prince George's County. So if there's if there is a need at this elementary school for crossing guards, you know, we can assist in outreach to the county police department to try to you know, get somebody if they're not there already. But but the, the crossing guards are currently county employees at the at the schools. Uh, college savings account. This was a very interesting idea. Um, uh, as with most very interesting ideas, Treasury hasn't thought of this either. So uh, we've reached out to Treasury, our Treasury contacts to kind of talk about, to get their guidance on this. So we're waiting for them to 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 give us their uh, their response. Um, it's like I said, it's a very interesting idea, um, and especially trying to essentially elevate or, re or eliminate or reduce the the educational gap. Um, and especially the income gap ultimately. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how Treasury, which Treasury does want to accomplish, it's just a matter of how they will interpret that because it may, they, 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 they may view this as more, they want a more instantaneous or more short-term kind of a approach to address that. Um, but it's a, it's a, it was a very creative idea. Um, and if they do approve it, we'll just need to or uh, kind of think about how this would work because um, there's some some issues that the city just needs to think about, you know, because people are transient in this area in our, in, in this region. So, you know, how do, how do you if they say it's eligible, how do you deal with, you know, families who may move out of the city of Mount Rainier and go to say to Washington or Virginia or wherever, you know, how does that how does that play out? Um, um, but we'll see. We'll, we'll just wait and see what Treasury says. Um, but but a gold star for creativity. I hadn't, we hadn't seen seen an idea like that one yet. Uh, community land trust. This is one that everybody, a lot of people are waiting for specifically a Treasury to address. They haven't really touched upon it yet. Um, and again, we've reached out to Treasury, Treasury contacts on this one. Um, there's definitely a strong case to be made for the concept. Um, because Treasury is allowing funds for the development of affordable housing in different forms and fashions. So, you know, so clearly a, a land trust is, is essentially one of those ways of getting at it. Um, but, but they haven't opined specifically on that. They've been talking um, more uh, the traditional um, kind of, kind of, uh, kind of ways. Um, under this one, you know, even if they, if Treasury comes back and says it's eligible, there's a couple of things to, to, to weigh. The city may want to at least weigh, weigh this type of investment versus other other ways of expanding home ownership in particular and, and, and really assess what's the, you know, which one gets you the, bit, the best results or most results that you want. Um, traditionally, community land trusts are usually heavy investments up front. Um, um and and making it work you know and, and getting a property and then you know uh moving it forward into the hands of, of a family um so so we just encourage you to kind of explore that versus some other uh, ideas as well for example you know doing a uh you know first-time home buyer type assistance program or something that's targeted towards towards a certain population you know and, and weighing those two things out as to which is which is kind of the best return for for the city, um, Mr. Tarlow. We had not had a chance because I think you sent a couple more um, later in the afternoon, so we haven't had a chance to look at those yet. Um, the QCT map. 
is here. So you do see in the purple is the HUD designated qualified census tracts. Um, so in those areas, again, just as a refresher, it's uh, treasury essentially is, is, is allowing a presumption. So you can do a lot of educational services, affordable housing in those areas. And as long as it's in that area, they're they're presuming things like that are, are serving an eligible population. Outside in these other areas, you just have to justify how the population that you're that's benefiting from the program or service was negatively impacted by COVID. So it's more on the, I guess it's the northern, northern end of the city, north northwestern part of the city. I think um, boundaries of it. Um, the so box, Queenstown, Queens Manor, Kaywood. Um, hold on, Jimmy. Uh, Thomas, are you done with your presentation or you still have a couple more things to add? I'm done with this one, but if I, if you can indulge me for one second to just switch to another one real quick. Um, and this is just kind of a, uh, a maybe a refresher for some or, or education for others, but um, just things to think about. But in particular, Statutorily, there's essentially four eligible uses of categories. It's public responding to the public health emergency or its negative economic impacts. Number two is premium pay. Three is this revenue loss component, which again is the more flexible uses if we can identify revenue loss because it basically goes to just typical government services type things that you would do. Don't have to be COVID related per se. And then the last one's water, sewer and broadband infrastructure. So, so what Treasury has kind of done is, um, and as of now, and it potentially may change as they continue to look at how they're going to treat the non-entitlement units like the city for reporting purposes and everything, but this is the rules as, as they exist now, is the city, for example, is going to have to report on whatever you program services you decide to do, you're going to have to report in these seven categories. And, and under each of these seven categories, there's numerous subcategories. All told, there's 60, almost 70 some categories where Mr. Kamali and his staff, when they go into the reporting portal, again, as it is now, and 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 classify your, your programs, project services under each of these. Um, public health, for example, this is not an all, all exhaustive list, but it gives you an idea of what's in this category. So. Typical COVID things, vaccination, testing, tracing. Uh, we talked about prevention of, of COVID in congregate settings, so like the schools with outdoor learning and and also um, the, the HVAC type systems. It can fit in prevention or it can also fit in the capital investments here um, a little bit further down. PPE equipment, it's decided to do it. those things are in here. Mental health, like we talked about that one position. This is the kind of the category where it would fall in. Um, the next category is negative economic impacts. And these are things typically you think of as helping people or helping businesses a lot. So it's helping householders with mortgage, rent, food, utilities. Um, they are allowing uh, cash transfers, which think of it as is essentially the stimulus kind of checks we've gotten or certain families have gotten. It's kind of in the long lines of that. Um, in, in the case of the cash transfers, Treasury basically says it needs to be relative to the economic loss. And the barometer they're basically using is that it needs to be in line with basically some of the previous federal stimulus payments. So in the past, the federal government's given 1250 for individuals up to 2500 for households or 1400 on the second round and up to 2800 for households. So think of it that way in those things. It's not thousands of dollars. It's You have to be within those guardrails. Um, you could also provide cash assistance to unemployed workers since we know that the supplemental payments have gone away. So those are a, a program category under negative economic impact. You could do job training assistance. Uh, one of our clients is, is doing this in the form of um, basically um, paying the salaries for several weeks of, of a formerly unemployed person the businesses bring back and hire and that they they will pay a portion of the person's salary for five six weeks um your typical small business assistance is part of it the last one is one not to forget about too is 
under negative economic impact, governments are allowed to use these funds to rehire public sector staff back to pre-pandemic levels. So say, for example, you had 20 police officers pre-pandemic, but for various reasons, you're down to 15. You could use these funds to get back to that you know, 20 staffing level. Now, obviously, you have to think about how do you sustain anything like that once the COVID funds are gone. But but that's that's an available tool. <clears throat> um, services to disproportionately impact the communities. This is in the QCTs, what we were talking about earlier. So within QCTs, or if you justify it outside of them, you can do things like this: affordable housing, homeless services, the various educational type programs, mental health. Um, um, you can also hire uh, public navigators to help people get to the system. You do uh, various uh, violent crime prevention uh, measures. Premium pay, we, we've kind of talked about that. You're probably pretty familiar with that. Um, and then infrastructure is basically clean water type projects, wastewater treatment, stormwater, water conservation, drinking water, and then the broadband piece that we kind of talked about with the, with the Wi-Fi one. Revenue replacement, as we mentioned, is, is the sixth category. Again, greatest flexible uh, use. Um, you know, if you have it, like I said, you see the list of things you can do. A lot of things with IT. If you want to modernize your IT system, you can. You know, you can do various just overall police, fire, and public safety type expenses. Um, so it's it's a it's things that governments do. Think of it that way. That you can use up to the revenue loss amount. And then the last category is administrative. It's Maybe like hiring program managers to help you implement some of these things. It's consultants like like our firm that you could also use uh, and report under here. There's a couple points to consider as you go through your process. Really, we we always encourage folks to start at the high level. What what are you trying to accomplish? What's your goals and objectives? Start there. Because sometimes, it, especially with these funds, it's easy to get caught into, you know, 19, 20, 25 different ideas. But what Ultimately, are you trying to accomplish with 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 these with these funds? And once you do that, then what's the prior what's the priority status of each of those? You know, is 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 objective one more important than objective two, uh, or is three more important than everything? So think of it. Think of those things. Another important one is when you want to. What's the time frame you want to accomplish this? And this really ties to how you want to spend the money, how quickly you want to spend the money. Right now you have the first tranche in hand, you'll get the second tranche in 12 months after you got the first. So, you know, are you trying to accomplish these things in a 12 month period, 24 month period, 36 month period? And remember with these funds, you have time. So you have until the end of calendar year 24 to encumber the funds. You have the end of calendar year 26, 26, to actually spend the money and pay the pay the money out. So you do have time. You don't have to rush and try to spend all these funds in 12 months, but if you choose to do, you can. But that's things that you, you need to think about. Uh, this one, what programs are being funded by other governmental sources? That's an important one a lot of people have, have, have focused on as well is to, um, if somebody else is doing a program or a need, you know, um, uh, you may not want to do a duplicate program. Uh, we talked about revenue loss, then uh, community participation. What level do you want the community to continue to have in these processes? I know you've had Tom, one. Yes. You have about two more minutes before yeah, this I open it to council. Okay, yep. go ahead. This will, this will be it. And and so, you know, how do you want to continue to engage the city, the, the, the community in, in this process, including for the second trots that comes? And then an important one too is how will you implement whatever programs you're going to do? Sometimes people say, okay, we want to do these five programs, but you don't have enough staff to do it. So those are just things that we're encouraging our clients to think about, especially the, the first couple. What's your goals and objectives and focus on the high level, and then you can start doing the programmatic. So with that, um, Madam Mayor, I, we are done from our end. Thank you so much. So I want to make sure we know we have about 10 minutes on this item. Um, we And it's looking like we're going to add more time. We have various residents here uh, that came specifically to make a comment as well. So I'll be opening the floor. Uh, Jimmy, Jared, 
followed by Luke. Go ahead, Jimmy, the floor is yours. Uh, well, uh, I'll be trying to be short. Uh, thank you, Tom and company. It's really great to have somebody kind of clarify some of the things we could be using. It's, I think we can simplify a couple of the things by, by deleting a couple of them. Uh, um, um, it's unfortunate you didn't get the uh, the full report from Joe's Movement Emporium. Uh, I know uh, Kamali, you have that. We should forward it to them because they did do a detailed uh, report on uh, some of the things they were proposing. Um, you know, I just guess it's a question of council. You know, what do we do next? <laughs> so how, how do we go? For, you know, how do we start working on this? That's okay. All. Thank you, Jimmy. Uh, Jared? Thanks, thanks again, um, Tom, for the feedback. Can, can you real quickly, can you clarify um, the, the census track um, at, the nor at the northern end of town uh, that encompasses basically most of our multi-unit housing? Um, can you clarify again the, the differential um, in what you can use um, Sorry, and the, and the differences in eligibility. Um, so in the, in the QT, QCT specifically, yes. there's there's things like the the various educational programs, the the, the housing, affordable housing type programs, okay. or, or those things you can specifically do. And and Treasury's giving you a presumption that they're eligible if it's in a QCT. So so those things typically outside of a QCT would not be eligible, but they can be but you got to provide a justification so there's okay. there's like some of the like crime prevention things are also a presumption in a qct so if you want to target and do a, a specific you know various crime prevention efforts in in parts of the city you can do that and treasury is going to say if it's in a qct it's presumed to be eligible if it's outside you got to then justify it how that's impacting okay. or benefiting the uh, population a uh, household or area that's being served by that Okay, and then um, a follow-up question that, because, you know, there, there's essentially that central track in the north is most of our multi-unit housing uh, has a substantially lower socioeconomic profile than the southern part of the city, basically, which is mostly single family and some uh, duplex and a couple small apartment buildings, which uh, is, is more high income, and that's reflected in which is a QCT and which isn't. So if you were to... Um, uh, do do a program or do a pro or do a project, if you will, that benefited the residents of the QCT. Uh, for example, in the northern the um, track at the northern edge of town, does the project need to be located in the QCT as well, or does it simply need to benefit the residents in that QCT? They give you a little flexibility, so it can it can be located physically within the QCT or it's benefiting families and, and people who, who reside in a QCT. Okay. So it doesn't necessarily have to be, um, 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 like a good example is the school, right? So tutoring, right? So mm -hmm. yeah. the school may not more than like, if I recall, it's not in technically a QCT, but yeah. it's probably it's not. receiving students who exactly. live in those, those, those apartments in that area. So, so in that case, it would be would be eligible because they're serving, you know, the the, the students who, who live in within inside the QCT. You follow me? Yep, I do. Yep, that's very helpful. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Jared. Uh, Luke, the floor is yours. Thank you. I've got a sort of a question for um, Thomas, and then one potential um, suggestion on a way forward. Um, Thomas, for lost revenue, um, I just want a clarification. It, it, it's so when we were preparing our budgets during COVID, we changed our some of our projections because of COVID. Um, now that caused us to make some decisions about spending less on capital improvements and trying to trim some fat where we could find it. Um, now our revenue from property taxes from home property taxes, I don't think ended up going down. I think we ended up getting revenue probably more than we expected. So do we have to show that year over year there was a revenue drop in, so for example, business 
our, our, our sort of business tax, which is really an inventory tax. Um, and then, because those are sort of, uh, so our revenue comes from taxes and I'm guessing that that may be one of them. Um, you could argue we get revenue from speed cameras and stuff and that went down because no one was driving. Is Are those the types of things that you get to, you know, use math on for revenue? Basically what Treasury is, is, is said is, you, it's one, it's an aggregate measure, so it's not by components. So they want you to take your aggregate, um, you know, city revenues. There are some yeah. uh, exclusions uh, uh, that they provided. Obviously, you exclude federal grants, you know, from, yeah. you know, from, uh, for example, like the city got money from the county that was really federal CARES money act. So we'd have to exclude that. But it's not. It's, don't think of it as an actual revenue loss like you and I would think of it. And that's been the struggle with governments and dealing with Treasury. It's really it's really a math fix, quote, fictional loss because how Treasury wants you to look at it, it's one on a calendar year basis, which, okay. is, which is opposite what governments do or on a fiscal year, June 30. So basically what they said is take fiscal 2016 to 2019 audit reports, your actual revenues during that period determine an average annual growth, then take your 20 actuals or fiscal 2019 actuals, I'm sorry, project forward to 18 months forward, I'm yeah. 18 months, which takes you to December, 2020. And that becomes your hypothetical city revenues. And then what they say is then count your actual revenues collected in calendar year 20, not fiscal year 20, calendar year 20. And if there's a difference, yeah. And that's why it's been frustrating for governments because everybody's tried to get them to do it on the worlds we know. Let's just do it on a fiscal year. It's easier, but they've, they've rejected yeah. that. So it's really a, a math exercise, um, but it's, and some some cities and towns have experienced a, a loss. It really depends upon the growth in those 2016 through 2019 yeah. years and then running it forward. Um, so okay. we'll work with Mr. Kamali to go through that fun exercise and, yeah. and, and we'll see. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if you do have a revenue loss. And then every calendar, every December and the December, you can do the same thing. So at the end of this coming calendar year, we can do the same exercise with Mr. Kamali and see if there's a, another number that comes up in a revenue loss under these projections that Treasury is having everybody do. Right, right. Um, Okay, that makes me a little more pessimistic on that front because we did have property tax revenue that that went up because our assessments went up so much. So that's a and remember too. Sometimes what people at this point, even if you have a revenue loss, you have to spend it. You can't just bank. Right, it. right, so. right. Um, okay, so that was my one question. And as far as a path forward. Um, you know, I, I think that we've got a lot of input from residents so far with the community meetings that we've had. Um, and I want residents to know this isn't the end of our getting community input. Um, I think it's important that we continue to do that, to continue to get ideas, to continue to see what folks want here. Um, I know we've gotten a lot of feedback on what you see on the screen in front of us. Um, as far as a way forward on the stormwater management projects um, that we've identified um, at the November legislative session, which is in a few weeks, um, I'd like to see if there is consensus from the mayor and council on at least maybe one of these projects, um, because I think it would be good to get at least one of these projects rolling um, because there, there's money that has to be spent. And I, I think there's probably consensus on on a, on, on, a, on a few of these. And I sort of loop the Perry Street ones together, um, uh, the Perry Street ones on the north side of the city, 31st and Perry, 33rd and Perry, and then the 31st Street Alley, which runs behind Perry Street. Um, as a potential project, we might get consensus on at that November legislative session to be able to move forward on. I think the Arundel Road Green Street continuation, I think that's one where we should have a conversation with the county first to see if they could use their funding to extend the Green Street project that's underway. Um, so I, I think folks know that the, the county is doing a Green Street from 34th to 31st Street on Arundel Road. Um, and the idea was if we could continue that all the way to Eastern um, and we should see if the county is able to do that. Um, so I want to have that conversation before any decision can be made on that front. Um, on the south side, um, 31st and Perry, Perry Street Alley, that's what I sort of talked about with the Perry Street. 34th and 37th Perry Street to Otis. 
Um, that's the south side project. That project, I think we need more feedback from the community on because it does change those streets to one way. And we've got to see if the residents on those streets want that. I've, I've gotten feedback from um, Look, yeah, most three minutes are beyond up. Okay. Um, uh, up oh. put a pause on it. And also the 40 minutes for this items are already up. So I would like to ask. We can't hear you, Selena. You. Mayor. I said. Mayor, we just have a. We have like you. 40 seconds. <laughs> before so the 40 I'm minutes going, is up. Thank you, Melissa. I'm going to ask, uh, remember, usually the first round is three minutes per person, but I would like to ask council to uh, please uh, make a motion to add more time. Uh, it's, it's obvious that there are most discussion uh, is needed. We have a motion to um, increase the time uh, for this item and by how much? I'll move to add 15 minutes. Okay, so there's a motion that. for 15 minutes. Second by second. Cardinal. I hear you, Timmy. Um, any objections? Hearing that, we're going to add another 15 minutes to this item and then Melissa will make sure we keep track of it, okay? So, right now, I'm going to open up the floor to the community and then we could get back to like the second round if you guys want for another two minutes and another minute. So, in the meantime, think through us like we have the residents uh, give us any feedback, okay? Um, and then we'll work on like what steps moving forward. So I want to make sure I'm not dismissing what you and Jimmy mentioned as well. Okay, Luke. Okay, so um, members of the audience, um, of our residents here, um, uh, I'm going to open up the floor. The basic rules are you have three minutes to um, state your comment on this item on its own, not any other items in the agenda. And uh, please state your name and last name and um, block number um, that you live like you know, 700, you know, 3,700, 37th Street will be an example. That will, that will be mine. And then um, go ahead and um, throw it. So I do have Mr. Hopkins on uh, first, first one in. Can, can you hear me better, Jimmy? Sorry. My voice, I think I might need some water. So Mr. Hopkins, uh, you're asking about the new proposal added to the agenda. Can you hear me better, Jimmy? Yes, I, oh. Jimmy, okay. Or Ron, can you hear me better? Or I think I moved. A little bit better, but not. Okay, so, go ahead, uh, Ron. So uh, I made this proposal, um, I submitted this to Mr. Kamala yesterday. So I'm just trying to figure out the process. So is this supposed to be reviewed by uh, Mr. Himmel first, and then he finds order. out if it's eligible Point of order, Mayor, point of order. Go ahead, Luke. Um, so it, I think you just opened this up for public comment and it sounds like Ron has a question as a staff member about a program he's proposing. I think we need to stick to the, to the rules and, um, if there's a proposal from staff that should go through city manager and then get, go to Thomas for, um, consultation, no, come to you us. Just answer, you just answered his question. So that's, that's the, um, that's the question. Okay. That's the question. That's, okay. Yeah, thanks. So, so, yeah, that's, that's, Thank you. And I think it's number 24 in the list. That's what Melissa mentioned. So it's there. Not all of them were fully reviewed. Uh, the first round of them were uh, run. And there's a there's a couple of them still in the pipeline for uh, Tom, uh, Michael Thomas to, re oh, to review. Okay, just for clarity. Yeah, I think it's like for the community as, as a whole. Um, yeah, this is not like the end list. Uh, you could still uh, submit information uh, to council. Uh, to very council about um, the uh, the various things that could potentially um, would you would like to see included in ARPA. Okay, so first in so, the list so we have. So I don't have to be on the meeting anymore. Is that so? This is not going to be brought up tonight. No. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. So uh, Timothy Myers, we right here. Uh, PTO for public comment. Uh, Tim, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mayor. I'm Timothy Meyer, president of Mount Rainier Elementary PTO. And thanks to everyone for letting me speak on behalf of Arbor Request for our school, plus our neighbors at Thomas Stone. A quick overview. Both of our schools are Title I, community schools, green schools, and incredibly diverse. 80 and 90% of our students are eligible for free and reduced meals. We're also proud to be neighborhood schools and take seriously our mission of being two schools, one community. We don't have the resources of specialty schools, but when you meet our students and teachers, you see both schools truly are special. 
and we appreciate the city asking for our input in this process. We've tried to keep our requests modest, both schools asking for less than 4% of overall funding so far. Even this amount would be a game changer for each of us. Mount Rainier Elementary has requested several items, but I wanted to focus on two of them. First, additional resources for outdoor education. As you know, nearly every public health expert would say the risks of transmission are much lower when students are socially distanced outside rather than in an indoor classroom. We created a pilot outdoor classroom last spring, so popular teachers had to compete against each other for time. We proved the demand. Now we need funding to be able to help create more outdoor spaces faster, more effectively, and able to hold many more students and teachers. This applies equally to Tom Stone and their needs. Second, we must address stormwater throughout the city, but it starts at the literal top. Our school sits at one of the highest points in the city, and every time it rains, the water flows downhill to the homes, businesses, and streets below. We know this is a problem, but with PGCPS having an $8.5 billion maintenance and construction backlog, the reality is that it will take groups like our PTO and supports from you to actually address it in a timely fashion. The good news is we're fully committed to tackling this problem. There are many stormwater needs around the school, but our specific funding request would allow us to either take on some smaller projects and do several of them, or leverage city funding to pursue bigger grants from groups like the Chesapeake Bay Trust, who we already have a relationship with and are currently doing one project with. We, we know you have many requests to consider, but promise this. Every dollar allocated to our two schools will be a dollar spent carefully, effectively, and with a real benefit to the Mount Rainier community. On behalf of both schools, I'd be happy to speak with any of you at any time in this process, and thank you. Thank you, Tim. Okay, next up, uh, oh, hey, Memorals, Melinda Miles, uh, you made a comment here. Do you want to speak or do you want me to just read the comment? Please just read the comment and maybe respond to me later. Thank you. All right, perfect. It's nice seeing you. Thank you for all the work in the community. It's wonderful to watch you all work. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. So the comment was, is there or there will be a written process for how the community as a whole can participate in the spending of these funds? Small groups are operating in the city in significant ways to help residents during this pandemic. Are there timelines for submitting proposals for funds? Uh, where is the information uh, for the public? So, um, yeah, it could be provided via email at a council at montrainiermd.org. Uh, we are not going to be deciding on everything. We're asking people to submit it as soon as possible so that we could start going through them. And um, our consultant, um, as you can see, will go, will read through them and figure out what information is needed. Um, the way I'm also looking at it is like we are going to need probably a document because at this point we were trying to get the information across. But also it seems to me that there's inf more information that is needed so that way we could best um, get out the feedback from our consultant and moving forward how to arrange it. So the sooner it's, um, it's submitted, the better. And uh, we could talk between council and our city manager to figure out what the deadlines are going to be and put them out in the public as well. Okay, and same council at MontRainierMD.org to be able to reach all the council members and mayor. Um, thank you. Okay, and I have now Brooke Kitt, Joe's Movement Emporium. Uh, Brooke, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Mayor and Council, um, for the opportunity to continue to dialogue with you all um, on the important use of these funds and, and for the process that you've been doing to uh, draw out a lot of our ideas. Um, when I submitted my initial proposal, I'd hope I would continue to have ways to understand more um, how programs can best benefit um, our residents and businesses and how Joe's can play a role in that. Um, so I see this as a work in progress to continue to accumulate really good ideas and for us to share what resources we have. Um, one is our space. Um, as some of the ideas are being shaped, if Joe's as a location can be uh, used to provide services or facilitate um, groups, uh, please call upon us. Uh, we have a lot of space still available right now. 
Um, we are in the process of building out a, um, an activity space in our parking lot. So we've learned a lot about an outdoor activity space. We'd, I'd love to share some of that knowledge. Um, we'd very much love to collaborate with the out of school time programs that are going to happen at the schools and how we all can work together for tutoring. Um, in addition, our job training program could be a really good intersection with either the workforce development proposal that Mr. Hopkins is uh, looking at um, or even our existing partnership with Employee Prince George's. Um, so I think we have a lot of ingredients um, to work together to uplift the citizens who've been um, hurt the most um, from the pandemic that's still ongoing and, and a challenge for many. So we look forward to getting your feedback on how we can shape uh, the best possible program. Thank you. Thank you, Brooke. It's really appreciated. Tim as well. Um, it, it's um, you guys are all three of you guys that spoke right now are, are a wealth of information and help to the community. So it's very appreciated. I know Tim, you spoke on behalf of both schools. Um, uh, and you know, I know Joe works very close to the school. Um, former Mayor Miles as well. So it's um it's good that we're all working together in unison. Okay, so um Melissa, is there anybody uh or MRTV, is there anybody on Facebook that has to make a comment or wishes to um please let me know so that we read the comment into um into record? Oh. None? And we okay. have about five more minutes. Thank you so much, Melissa. Okay, uh Council. Um I, I guess I didn't uh, I didn't speak much on it, but I submitted a list to you guys of other items that uh, the community members have uh, have also requested. So um, please forward to uh, Kamali. Please forward to um, to our consultant. Um, and to me, it seems like one of them happens to be a program manager. So that when our end, we get some work done. I think right now the method that we have been using is basically like people request the funds and we put it in the list, right? But it looks like we definitely need one person to be able to do this work in our end, one, and two, even create a, a basic application. So that way some of the questions that our consultant uh, needs to be able to best answer um, are, are taken care of. And I do wanna to apologize to uh, Mr. Hopkins. I did call upon you and uh, usually if we have staff um, that has the questions, usually like, you know, we answer it. So. I want to make sure that's clear. So, Mr. Hopkins, I apologize for calling upon you, and um, and you were in your in, in every sense of like uh, making sure you make your comment. Uh. So, saying all that, I would like to um, open the floor to council once again. This is a two minute round, and we open up a third time if you guys want for the one minute. Um, be aware that how much minutes do we have, Melissa? Four minutes. Four. Yes. So technically, you guys have uh, you guys are going to ask for more time in this item, and I think that for the future we might have to do just an ARPA meeting because uh, this is um, very interesting subject for all of us. Okay, so um, I will go with uh, Jimmy, followed by Luke, followed by uh, Jared. Jimmy, the floor is yours. Uh, so there's a lot of work to be done. Uh, maybe we need a subcommittee of. Uh, two people from council uh, and Mr. Kamali uh, to actually, you know, get this done. It's hard to actually practically get this thing, you know, done in a, this kind of session. I find, uh, and in terms of where we need more reports, and that some a lot of work has to be done between meetings. So I'm proposing maybe a subcommittee of two people and Mr. Kamali, and when we get some person to actually kind of figure out, you know, what's the next step. I'm not sure it's, and then to come back to council of that. I just find it hard for us to, in this process to come to conclusions on some of this stuff. So yeah. it's a thought. Yeah. Thank you. Anything else, Jimmy? No, just so I'm proposing <laughs> a subcommittee of two people to meet with Mr. Kamali and actually try and hammer out some ideas and come back. Perfect, thank you so much. Luke, you're next, followed by Jared. Yeah, I, I, I kind of like that idea, Jimmy. And I also think we need to be in person. I think this is going to be really hard to do over WebEx. Um, so I think that I'd be happy to be part of working on 
a project plan for how to move this forward, working with Mr. Kamali on that front and whoever else wants to join me um, to, to sort of set this up for an in-person meeting because I think we're, this is gonna be really hard to do over WebEx. Um, and so I, I think that might be, might be helpful. And I, almost, and, and I almost think that should be, uh, I'm just looking at the calendar here, maybe before the legislative session in November or or after I don't I, you know I, if we have consensus on one of these stormwater projects at the November legislative session then perhaps it could be after that when we have to sort of look at look at all the other projects um, yeah it I mean even putting it that way I think is very close because I what I realized even from um, Mrs. Thomas who's here like you know uh, there's a lot of stuff of information that's needed because every single one of the water store management is not like an overall umbrella. Everything has to be cut into pieces and be justifiable um, in how it fits into the ARPA. So it's not like an overall, here's like five and they'll fit. So um, yeah, so I would I will go ahead since I'm running, usually run the meeting and the projects. So I'll, I'll, I think I like that idea to be able to do that and get it across. Jared, I don't want, hi. Yeah, no, I, I would just reaffirm that point as well. I mean, each one of these projects has different staffing obligations, has different resource needs, has different timelines and has different costs. And, 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 and for a lot of these, there's, um, you know, there's interactions like, you know, the, the school items for what, for example, those are, you know, there, there's potentially places where things we want to do are, are, um, you know, we need to look at the, um, um, uh, parallel, uh, resources possibly offered by the County or the state, um, or the feds. So I, I just fully concur with Luke's thought on this. It's it's really hard to kind of ab abstractly and conceptually. I think this is this is a really great exercise um, in sort of thinking through. And Thomas, your feedback on this is super super helpful in terms of eligibility and and the ever emerging, <laughs> ever ever emerging and ever evolving treasury guidance, which seems to get more you know keep on getting more and more refined. Uh, so I appreciate that um, as, as tre treasury issues better guidance. So um, thanks on that. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jared. So I'll go ahead and work with the collective loop because I think that aside from forms, we need to like work on deadlines. Um, so that way we could um, inform the community. The other thing I think will be important for us to create a web page um, in our website that talks about the ARPA funds, how to apply for them, you know, and the whole entire process, including once we follow out and approve on, on the uh, different items. So that was a transparent spot and it's a spot where the community could go and, and learn what the deadlines are, one, how to apply, but at the same time, know where the funding is going. So that way we have a full transparent um, amount because even in the community conversations, a lot of people definitely were were surprised with how much money it was and they had various questions on, on what the process is and how to like tr try to get it across um, in order to impact the various things. And at the same time, you know, um, Mr. Thomas said something very clear. We need to be also aware of what the capability of us doing is and what is needed for us to be able to accomplish because um, there could be 300 projects, but can the city really go through 300 major projects? And so it's not just the funding. So if staffing needs to be taking place, that also needs to be taken into consideration. So be like creating the packages for each of these items, you know, not just like this is what it is, the maintenance for it and what's going to accomplish so that way we're fully aware. Because what we don't want is get ourselves in a situation where once this money runs out, how does the city um, either carry on these programs or B, how do they um, account moving forward, you know, or that they might not get accomplished because it's like a, a smaller seed than we thought it was going to be. Okay, so council time is up. And if you guys need one more minute, you need to give it five more minutes minimum to this discussion. If not, um, I will move forward. Um, and so oh, if not, like Luke might I think we need five more minutes just to come to a conclusion. Second. Okay. Thank you. Um, so that gives you guys one minute each. Okay. Um, so at this point, I want to narrow down what it is, where we're at. Uh, the consultant review some of the stuff that we put in. There's more things coming in the pipeline that he's going to review, including something that I just sent. Um, there is um, in a 
uh, seems like an agreement on the floor for us to create a subgroup in order for some of this work to be accomplished um, before it gets to the meeting. So that way uh, we utilize the next two weeks as much as we can. So therefore, ideally in the legislative uh, session for November, we could have the possibility like to maybe even vote on a few things uh, to start laying out the, the work. So I'll leave it at that. Um, so Luke, you have the floor. Uh, Jimmy, and I'll leave you at the end, Jerry, since you were the last one to speak right now. Go ahead. So my proposal would be for Selena, you and me to find a time with Mr. Kamali to meet um, and talk through all the various issues that you cited um, and go from there and present that back to the mayor and council as um, in either a uh, either at the legislative session in November or a standalone meeting between now and then or after then. And, you know, once we once we talk with Mr. Kamali, we can sort of figure out, um, have a proposal and share it with the rest of council. Jimmy, is that what you were thinking? Correct. Okay. So, so, you know, you and I can work on a date and time that works with our schedules and Mr. Kamali's. Perfect. I like the sound of that. Uh, Jimmy? Back on, uh, on no, I, I, I would be willing to do this, but uh, since Luke volunteered, it may you should be on it. That committee sounds great. The only thing I would like to suggest is that uh, that we got some uh, full of proposals from Joe's and from the schools if we could kind of forward them to Mr. Himmler because it actually did have more content because I know in a couple of them, he just said he didn't have enough information. So if Mr. Kamali could do that or if he needs it from us uh, to send the full proposals on that but go i think you two guys you know you two people mr kamali we look forward to your work on this i'm pretty sure jimmy that there's certain technical stuff that you can help on don't okay. don't don't think you're getting away from it either is jared no no i just you know <laughs> i mean like jimmy this was okay uh jared the floor is yours sorry i agree with that approach i'm here to support you all wherever you need thanks Thank you so much. So, uh, Mr. Kamali, if you could forward the food length proposals to um, to Thomas and Michael, so that way um, he's able to see them, but also at the same time, uh, so Luke and I will work on a time to meet, to make, put, push forward the next steps, and uh, based on what the consultant review gives us, we'll find out what is actually needed for each of the proposals for information to ideally create a template so that was easier used to be able to gather all the information. So that way, when we come to the meetings, we have more of um, more of a feedback that he could give us for us in the community. Okay. Um, all right. So, council, um, are you ready to move forward? And Mr. Kamal, do you have any questions regarding the next steps? No, I, I just appreciate everybody to send me the proposal on time. And I can share it with a consultant because consultant, uh, you know, uh, they have to get it in time and make sure that we give it to them, you know, and then expect the result from the consultant. So if there is a, you know, something comes late, I'm sorry, I cannot do anything about it. And as long as, you know, you send it to me or the people, the community, everybody sends it to me, I get it to Tom, but Tom needs to have enough time in order to get back to us again. So I appreciate everybody to send it to me, then I'll forward it to Tom right away. Thank you so much. Um, what would they be? Um, I think it's like not right before the meeting. I think that's what I meant. But if you have a proposal to send before Friday, so that we could put in the second round of like uh, proposals to be reviewed. I know uh, I sent some today. I believe uh, was one of the council members also sent some stuff. Uh, so this will be like the second round of proposals that he'll be able to see, and then we'll go ahead and send the, the ones from the PTOs and Joe's so that way like it's more fuller information. So uh, try to send it in as soon as possible. You know, it's like I said, like that, the idea is like for us, for Luke, I, and Mr. Kamal and the consultants to start working and moving on some of these things. So the sooner we have the proposals, the, we will know where to fit them in. Um, for the ARPA funds, so that way uh, we can move forward. So um, I will ask if anybody has a proposal, please send it out by Friday so that we can start moving forward. I'll set the first timeline, but it's, you know, at least it's for this round of um, of information to start reviewing it and laying out the work. Uh, th thank you. Um, 
former mayor Melinda Miles? That's a great question. Um, okay, so moving on to the next um, item on the agenda, uh, scholarship committee. Uh, the mayor and council discussed the scholarship committee appointments term to extend to one more year, totaling two years terms instead of one year moving forward. As a background information uh, for our new council members, uh, the scholarship committee is entering their fourth year. Usually what we have done is like each of the council members and mayor has appointed one member of the community to be able to uh, represent them in the scholarship committee. The city clerk is our liaison and I work with them with whatever they need, right? Um, and it's usually a one year term and then we reelect them. But I wanted to know if you guys were opening to extend possibly this position to two years. Uh, we've had quite a few um, members uh, that have been in the have been in the committee for at least two years. Um, so if you guys will entertain that, we could go back to the scholarship committee and find out which of the members will be open to extend for one more year. Um, or we could do the whole process as it stands right now, which basically each person picks uh, one person for the community and um, and the committee starts working um, in meeting in order for us to get the scholarship moving for next year. So I'm going to open up the floor uh, to Jimmy, Jared and Luke. Go ahead. I, I don't have any. You know, <laughs> Seems fine. Okay. Perfect. Uh, Jared? And no comment on this. No additional comments. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Luke? No, it's, uh, I'll just say for Jared and Jimmy, um, um, I've appointed uh, a couple of residents now to the scholarship committee. First, it was um, Jenny Marsh, which Jimmy, you probably know Jenny. She actually just moved. Um, and then Dave Epley, who Jimmy, I think you know, and, and Jared, I'm not sure if you know. But they both, um, I remember after they did it, they both came and just said what a fun time they had. They just had a great time because you meet kids who you didn't know were in Mount Rainier because they were living in a different part of town and they have these great stories and they just both had a lot of good things to say. So um, think long and hard about a resident who might enjoy this. Um, uh, it's one of the, I think I've said this every time we end up giving the money out to, to the scholarship folks. It's, it's, uh, it's a, it's a great, it's one of the best days because you get these kids who like have amazing stories and we're helping them, you know, not a ton, but at least, you know, pay for some books at college and it's every, every dollar helps. Yeah. And they've gone on to graduate from college, move on to, um, to get their master's. So they have been featured like in various awards, um, for, um, um, heroic work. I mean, it's it's outstanding uh, how great our youth is, and also they become uh, youth ambassadors for the city. So it allows for them to also, um, you know, um, do good in the in the community and at the same time in their own um, in their own perspective uh, careers. Um, so it's it's really nice that we have an award ceremony once they selected the commitments. Not much. Uh, basically, they meet maybe like two three times um, to receive the documents. Um, to review the applications, interview the kids, and vote on the recommendations and attend a ceremony. So it's like maybe a two, three week commitment uh, through the year. So what I'll do is I, I could reach out. Um, if you already know that if your member is not gonna be able to um, to continue being um, on the scholarship committee, uh, let me know. But if not, I was thinking of reaching out on who we currently have and figure out if they could still do it one more year. But if not, what we could do is like we all like reappoint and I'll give you guys a list of who is in the committee right now. You guys are awfully quiet, Consul. Wait, can you say that last part again? Sorry, Selena. So this is what I want to know. One, reach back. So I guess in this case, it's going to be just you look, reach back to your um, your person to find out if they'll be interested okay. in, in joining. I will send the persons that we currently have. Let us reach out to see if they're interested in serving one more year. Okay. Or you guys could like Jared, uh, you three, um, because I'm, I'm basically I'm gonna appoint my same person. You know, they are very part of the community. That's what I was thinking of like if we could maximize the amount to two years, so we don't have to do this every year. It would be like more of a flow. That was one of the recommendations the committee did make that um, 
it gets a bigger flow if they stick together for at least more than one year. So option one, we reappoint everybody, and it could be the same person if you choose to, or option two, we work to see if we can extend it to one more year for the members that are here if they're willing to accept. Luke, do you have anything? I see your mic open. No, I'm thinking. Um, I see Jimmy with his hand raised, so I'll go over to, I'll defer to Jimmy. Sorry, Jimmy, uh, go ahead. I just, I like the one more year just to give us a sense of, you know, how people are doing and then we, you know, extend it. Okay. Jared? How are you doing, Jared? I'm oh, sorry. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with Jimmy. Okay, perfect. Look. Three. Okay, so I'll reach out to the scholarship committee members so they uh, go to present them to uh, Melissa because that's their point person. And at the same time, ask them if they would like to extend one more year. If one of them says no, then I'll come back to you guys and um, and, and we'll do a, a call up. You guys go help like appoint someone else, okay? All right. So moving on to the next uh, next point. Uh, oh, sorry, police advisory. Hold on, guys, I need to put this into focus one. Okay. Uh, Mayor and Council will have a discussion at the Police Advice Review Board. Jimmy, this is an item that you put in the agenda. Is this more like an update or what is specifically is it? I'm going to see the form to you. Uh, I, and I really need to be updated. I know that this is something that was discussed. I'm not sure if there was a, a resolution passed uh, that we, what, what, where are we at about doing this and what has to be done next? Maybe okay, some other people in council uh, who were here when this was passed can let some of us newbies know what's going on. All right, Luke, floor is yours. Yep, thank you, Mayor. Um, so uh, Mayor Miles drafted legislation, this legislation to create the Police Advisory Review Board. There was a few back and forth. I know I redlined a version, then it went to Alyssa, um, our city attorney. We ended up passing it, the legislation, towards the end of the year. Um, and so the next step is is setting it up. Um, and I think that was an assignment that Scott was going to take on. Um, that was one of the priorities that he had listed. So with Scott's resignation, it's probably waiting for somebody to be a champion to help set that up. Um, so Jimmy, if you're interested, or Jared, um, I think that's that's open. Um, when we passed the legislation, there were a lot of um, questions. Um, and so when we passed it, we said specifically if we needed to revisit the legislation to change anything that didn't make sense, we would. Um, we were one of the first in the state to kind of kind of do something like this. So we were mindful of the fact that there might have to be things changed in the legislation later. So you may want to um, look at the ordinance. I can see if I can dig it up and um, send it to you, Jimmy and Jarrett. So you guys have a copy in hand and uh, and go from there. Um, so it's just a matter of who wants to be the champion of it. And then, you know, you can you can set it up. OK, perfect. Uh, uh, Jared. Um, no, thanks for the update, Luke. I, I was you know, I was um, not on council um, when this when this came about. So I appreciate I appreciate. The update. Yeah. So thank you for that. So uh, Jimmy is actually a member of the Maryland Municipal League legislative team. And I know one of the, um, and this is tied to this, one of the um, two points, uh, priorities that we adopted as the Maryland Municipal League in this last conference to work on this year um, have to do with, um, with this. Jimmy, do you remember, can you verbally say what the two are and how they it might potentially relate to this? I can't really hear you that well, Selena, but... Uh, Sorry, Jimmy, but, uh, what was but, the two MML legislative uh, initiative? Oh, I, I missed that. Uh, so I'm sorry I can't tell you that. <laughs> okay, so I will say uh, we definitely need to review the legislation to make sure that the last thing that was passed 
um, reflect so we could do. I know there was, uh, MML was discussing, and, and Jimmy, on your next legislative meeting, maybe you could give us a feedback to the rest of the team, but um, the, one of the items that was discussed is the fact that at this point, I believe the advisory board or the board that the officers need to go to will be like the county and not the city and some of the cities were stating that um, if we have our own police department, why will they have to go to the county and they're not coming to a board like the, what we're trying to build right here when it comes to um, any comment um, or any issue that, that happens. Uh, so I will say one step right now is like read. If you could find the look, if not, I'm going to look it up as well. If not, we could also um, reach, reach out to uh, maybe for, former Mayor Miles might be able to have it as well. But um, so that way the council could review it so we could be in the same page um, and then we could move forward with, with the next step. So I, I'd be willing to lead, uh, get the, somebody could send it to me, get it, review it, and kind of see what has to be done next, including see how it relates to the state of priorities. Mayor so Benitez, somebody, yes. I just- Go ahead, Mayor. Mayor Miles, go ahead. Thank you. I just posted the link to the uh, legislation uh, in the chat. Thank you so much. So I'd be willing, again, I'm willing to uh, take the link, look over it, and then come to back to the council exactly what we should do next. Perfect. Perfect. You could come back and, and make the suggestions, Jimmy. Okay. It's so yours. Um, council, are we on an agreement to move forward that way? I know. We're like, oh, no, Jimmy, don't do extra work for us. Yeah. Thank you, Jimmy. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks, Jimmy. Jared, we're good? Yep. We're good. Thank you. Perfect. So um, do you guys have anything to add to this item or do you guys want to move on to the next one? It looks like you guys are shaking your head like this has been resolved. Um, so, Jimmy, you're taking lead um, um, and keep us informed. OK, so next item, uh, status update on Potts Hall. Uh, Potts Hall. Uh, the mayor and council will receive an update on the status of Potts Hall. Um, Kamali, can you give us an update on where we are with Potts Hall? Well, the only information that I have for you, Mayor, after Elizabeth Marshall was gone, our grand writer, and she was working on the bond bill. So I had to assign the project to Public Works for CO, and uh, right now she's sending some document to the state, some invoices that they wanted from the last time that we had. So that's all I got right now and we're waiting for them to review the invoices and see what their their response is going to be and uh, Mr. Kamali when is that deadline because we applied for um for an extension when is does that extension uh, expires when it comes to uh, the um, permits for Potts Hall I think uh I I don't really know because at that time I was not the city manager and based uh, on the information that I have, I have to look into that. And I think the uh, last time Mr. Goldstein extended for six months, if you remember the time that you were the city manager and uh, they were communicating with you and they extended for another six months, I believe, with the county. So we might have about three months left. I'll send you guys a communication um, on it because I was on the other end of it as the staff was like working on getting it completed. Uh, Jimmy, you put this item on the agenda. Do you have any any other questions? And I'll go through the rest uh, of the team. So I, I you know, I know uh, Mr. Kamali is overloaded with work and he's doing a, a great job putting a team together. Uh, at some point, uh, maybe not now, but maybe in the uh, November, I, I think we need, uh, I mean, for me, like how much money is in it, what the projects are, what, where we're at, so we can decide where to go ahead. And, uh, you know, maybe by the December work session, uh, this is October, we actually have a, some time to get a, like an overview of, you know, not just, you know, where the, uh, not just where, you know, what the deadlines for the you know, the permits or whatever, but actually, you know, how much money have we spent? How much, you know, what, what are we looking at? Because I, I think it needs some time, but uh, I know Mr. Kamali is very busy. So maybe, I don't know if you think we could figure out by the December work session, we could actually spend, a, you know, a half hour, you know, to actually see 
where we're at and think about, you know, where we may go ahead with this because this has been on the books for, you know, 10 years. So I, I, what I'm proposing is maybe by the December meeting, we have like a kind of a, a full discussion with a whole view of, you know, what kinds of proposals on the table. Okay, thank you, Jimmy. Uh, Jared, Luke? Um, I, I think like Mr. Kamali had his hand raised, so I'd like to defer to Mr. Kamali to see if he could answer Jimmy's question, if that's a work. Oh, do you, frame. Luke, um, I was thinking you guys could get a round of questions and then he could answer all of them instead of like one at a time. It makes a little more um, for it, the process to go a lot faster. So do you have a question, Luke and Jared, or no? You guys are just gonna like ask Jimmy's question. I, well, I, I should say this. So just to just to specify just a little bit more on Jimmy's question. So I think Mr. Kamali, if you could have for us at the December work session, the status of the POTS Hall process, what is, what are we supposed to do at the end of three months? What is the thing that we're supposed to do that at the end of the, what might be three months? And, um, you know, if we could, if we could have it, that conversation at the November work session, that might be best. So we don't lose more time. Um, and if we have a cost estimate for the project, that's the other piece of it. That is, that is big. And I think those two pieces of information will be really helpful um for us to be able to make decisions on where to move from there so again just to repeat back the two pieces of information what is it that we're supposed to have done within this time frame that's going to expire with the county and what is the cost estimate for that thing that's supposed to be done thank you perfect um thank you luke jared i don't have any additional um comments or questions thank you Thank you. Um, aside from the two lists that Luke mentioned, I will definitely ask for us if you could reach out to um, the architects so we could see what the final drawings are. One um, for us uh, that have been in the council, but also for the new council members. So we're all in the same page when it comes to the project and getting familiar with it. Okay, Mr. Uh, Mr. Kamali, you have the floor. Yes, I definitely uh, get something and all this question will be answered by the time that we go to the next work session and hopefully I have everything by that time. You have two months. <laughs> two months. No, I'll get it sooner than that. Okay. No, Perfect, I appreciate yeah. that. I appreciate everybody's, you know, question and I definitely look into it and uh, we get more information for mayor and council. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, Council, do you need another round on this or are you ready to move on to the next one? Next. <laughs> I know. I'm trying, guys. I mean, you guys get me a now we're gonna have ARPA meeting here. Uh next item. Jared Stolfes, you're up. Outdoor fire pits. American Council will have a discussion on outdoor fire pits. Jared, the floor is yours. Yep. So Thanks for uh, thanks, Selena. Um, so this is actually something that um, came up last winter. Uh, um, former council member uh, Scott Cecil actually had uh, brought it up, and there was some resident chatter on it. Uh, and as we go into the um, basically a winter again, I wanted to um, bring it up for discussion. So um, just a quick uh, quick summary of this. Um, there's there's resident. Um, there's there's been resident utilization of backyard fire pits. Um, this is has been important during COVID uh, as indoor get-togethers were basically unallowable. Um, we're heading into a second winter of COVID where indoor gatherings continue to present health concerns. Uh, and one thing um, our code actually prohibits um, and our code prohibits any um, fires, basically outdoor fires to be set within the city unless they're in a stove or a furnace within a building. And um, this is actually much, much, much more strict than uh, the county code, um, which has, uh, I, I would say, aligns with practice in terms of um, allowing backyard, um, backyard fires with, you know, sufficient, um, sufficient checks such as uh, being more than 30 feet from any structure, now being allowed on any balcony or deck, having a water source available. Uh, and the reason I'm bringing this up now is um, I think that 
it, it might be timely since we're going to head into another COVID winter uh, to potentially consider reverting our um, city city code on this issue to the county, um, which is what almost pretty much all other cities in our area do. They don't have any guidance on it at all um, to both kind of set set code with practice. I know this is something a number of quite a few residents honestly do, uh, and that to um, create a way for people to safely uh, gather outside as we go into another cold winter. So um, with that, that's that's uh, my bit. I would love to hear feedback, uh, I guess, either from council or um, any other reflections from um, city staff, if there are any. So we do have a code uh, interim director here as well. Uh, thank you for sticking with us, Alma. Uh, so I'm going to go to council first and then um, I'll go to um, Alma and Mr. Kamali. Okay, um, damn, who do, whose turn is it now? Uh, Luke, Jimmy? Um, I have been to many a backyard fire um, <laughs> in the city of Mount friend. Rainier that may or may not have been at my house or may or may not have been at <laughs> neighbors' homes or may or may not have been lots of different places around the city. Um, so it's a very common thing that's happening. Obviously, we're not enforcing it. We do not intend to enforce it. Um, it has been a great way for people to get together during COVID. Um, it was like the first thing that people started to realize, oh, we can, you know, hang out by a fire and, and have a beverage and, and still socialize, you know, six feet from each other. Um, and Jared put it very eloquently in talking about this second winter we're going to go through and the need for it. So um, I support anything we can do to clarify in the code that this is permitted or that the city's not going to enforce it. Um, uh, you know, I, I don't know if that's if that if we need to amend our code or just do something to the effect of like a lowest law enforcement priority thing that Scott used to do a few times. So, you know, mm -hmm. I, I don't know which one of those it would be. I don't know if it's actually in our city code or just in the county code, but if it is in the city code. I'm good amending it. Um, if it's not, maybe we can just say it's, you know, let the public know it's not something we're going to enforce. Thanks. OK, Jimmy. Jimmy Carter. Okay, all right. you, you haven't volunteered for anything this meeting, so why don't you figure out what we have to do and give us this concrete proposal on mm -hmm. either uh, what we should be doing. Come. Okay. Um, um, Alma, are you gonna are you able to answer any of those questions when it comes to like where in the code it is and what is what it stays currently or no? Sure. Um, so what we have in the code is section 10-115, but it, that's for open open burning. Um, and it's pro prohibited um, actually only in public places and streets. Nothing about private property? Nothing about private property, no. Okay, thank you so much, Alma. So I would definitely like to tell you guys like, yeah, there's, I think we need to make sure. So one, we have not enforced it. Obviously, it's not even in our code, right? And I don't want uh, because I got a couple of calls on this. It's like this is not a saying we're going to be. Um, our goal is not to enforce uh, gatherings. You know, you need to make sure your like COVID precautions are taken and stuff like that. But the other thing that comes to mind is like if we put an enforcement, who, who and how do you go about regulating this? Because uh, you're talking about like people doing this usually after hours, right? Or, you know, when our team is out and um, what are the parameters are. So definitely I got a couple of calls figuring out like if in a very kind way, if we if we're trying to uh, um, add an extra ruling to something that um, is not causing any trouble in, in a very kind, I'm going to make it very kind words, but I'll give the second round for the floor. So to me, it's like we could put some minor stuff, but, you know, being in in tune that who's going to regulate it, what um, the parameters are, if you guys are thinking of that, or is it something we just leave alone or do we add just like um, minor safety precautions to it to make sure like, you know, the homes and the people are, are safe, but not take it to the extreme. Uh, Jared. Yeah. So sorry, Alma, real quick. I'm aware of the section uh, 10 dash, uh, sorry, section 10. The section I'm referring to is section 107 in our code. Um, 
that says it's unlawful for any person to set on fire being burned within the limits of Mount City, Mount Rainier. Um, basically, garbage, filth, paper products, trash leaves, or any other substance except within stoves or furnaces located within buildings or within incinerators. So there's uh, the the ten one fifteen the open burning section. You are correct. That's only public streets, public areas. But section one hundred seven. Uh, as written, to my understanding, refers to any, anywhere within the limits, limits of the city. And that was the that was the thing that's been pointed out to me by folks as potentially limiting uh, this this particular activity. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Emma. And after I'm done with the second round with the, with the council, uh, we are going to open up to the public. Okay. Go ahead, Emma. Sure, and I, I, I do understand um, the other ordinance that you're you're referring to. Um, I have, um, you know, done a little bit of research um, also, not only in PG County, but also in Maryland. So it, it's something that if we want to go more in depth with it, um, it's definitely information that I can forward everyone. Okay, perfect. And Jerry, I think we might have to separate between fire pit, like people burning fire to get united and people burning uh, leaves yeah. or plastic or something else. I think that's what's causing the confusion, at least for me. So yeah, the, I, to, you're talking about? Sorry, to be clear, the the 6107, I, the, the open burning section that would apply to backyard fires, for example, appears to be written about, around like basically the burning of leaves or garbage. That's right. As, as written, as written, okay. yeah, it, it 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 would include, and that that was the that was the thing I was pointing out. So, um, yeah, okay, look forward to that um, clarification, Alma. Perfect, thank you, Jared, Jimmy, Luke, and then anything to add, or I'll open it up to the public after you guys. Jimmy, go ahead. You're on mute, Jimmy. Jared, to sit down with Alma and see what, if anything, has to be done. And come back. Uh, you know, <laughs> nothing has to be done. That's great. If something should be done, it has to be tweaked. Why don't you talk to Alma and figure out, you know, great. what should have to be done? Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. I know time is up. Can I please ask for five more minutes? We do have um, former Mayor Miles uh, who would like to make a comment. So can I entertain for I, five, I minutes? Move five more minutes? Second. Seconded. It's been properly moved and second. Any objections? Hearing none, uh, we have five more minutes added to this item. Um, Mayor Miles, uh, the floor is yours. I want to go really fast. One, as I've understood the ordinance over the last 52 years or so, it applied to the leaf burning and all the other things. It had nothing to do with fire pits. I believe when the question came up to the council some months and Sundays ago, they wanted to have a fire pit over there on that property that we no longer own at Eastern at Eastern and Rhode Island Avenue. And because of the rules that you stated earlier, we did not know how to govern having a fire pit at that location. It's never been prohibited on private properties. And I will actually say, recently I added a fire pit to my backyard, knowing that it was not against any of the codes that we have in Mount Rainier. So if you're gonna change it, I think we certainly ought to hear about it. And I wanna know first, thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. So yeah, Jared, uh, work with Alma. It sounds like that's where we're heading. But yeah, different should be to one or the other because um, fire pits that are burning plastic and stuff like that to me is something different. And fire pits to like congregate with the people in their private property and stuff like that is a whole completely different um, ballpark. Okay, I'm, I'm, I understand one. The other one, I'm, I'm fine with the fire pits as long as people are taking care of what they need to do. And, you know, so that's kind of where we're at. So I guess you have your next next steps, Jared, and um, Council, anything else? And any member of the public that would like to speak on this item on Facebook or here? Okay, hearing none. Melissa, there's nothing on Facebook? No. Thank you, Melissa. Okay, um, so we're moving on to the next item. And the next item was upcoming events for the city of Mount Rainier. How exciting, huh? 
So can you put the screen on, uh, Melissa? Thank you. So I'll read through them. Okay. So here are the upcoming events that we're having um, starting October 31st for Halloween and more information is going to be coming out this week. Um, but at this point, it's like we're thinking of a trunk and treat in order to have um, space for kids to be able to grab candies through the city. Uh, so that if we have parents that feel a little more comfortable to going to our stations, they could go ahead and do that. Um, and I know various neighbors are going to do um, be doing Halloween as well. On uh, November 1st, we're going to be lighting up the holiday circle. Um, this basically is to kick off the holiday season. And this is because we have various um, religions and uh, that are, take place in the city. So this acknowledges the uh, diversity within our city. A Veterans Day event will take place November 6th. Um, and we are going to be having this year, just not the breakfast, but we're also going to be having a raising of the flag, a small program um, as well. So that's going to be added. So if you're a veteran in the city of Mount Rainier, um, reach out. Uh, Mayor Miles, I know you did this event beautifully. So we're going to be reaching out to make sure we do not you know, skip anyone as, as well. Part of the things that you're also going to see is um, information being sent out. We have various staff members that are veterans, so we also want to acknowledge them as well. And the uh, breakfast for the veterans, as also we also acknowledge the work that they've done, but also give them certificates as well. Uh, the Census Committee Volunteer Luncheon and Certificates, we're working on that currently. And because of COVID, we have tried not to um, not to be anywhere close. So we're trying to modify what the luncheon will look like in order for us to have uh, the luncheon and certificates of it. This is like part of the grant that was awarded and the funds have already been prepaid. So we just need to like set up the day and make, move forward with it. Uh, Thanksgiving baskets, um, we're looking into November 20th. Um, that was one of the proposals that we put forward for ARPA funds. Um, I know last year, uh, Mayor Miles like, led the, the efforts uh, for both the Thanksgiving and the holiday baskets. So we want to make sure some of our funds are also being utilized for that for the next year because we know it's a very important day for our families. I want to make sure that we are taking care of, um, we're taking care of them as well. Uh, let me see. Uh, Santa will be driving through the city. We are working currently like uh, in talks with the fire department. MPD will also be ready to gear up um, Santa's drive through. So potentially we'll have two Santa's drive. If not, at least Santa will be visiting Marinier minimum one time, but if not two. And the holiday basket. So this more or less like reads a couple of the ones that the city is going to be working on. The break committee, it is going to be doing the parade of lights. Uh, we are going to figure out how to go about doing the stocking for seniors because it's a very sensitive subject with COVID still being um, very predominant. And um, the uh, family um, adoption exchange uh, that um, is taking place as well. Uh, tomorrow, the Red Committee will be meeting, and if you want to tune in, the city already put out the information to know where we're at with the process. If you want to be one of the families um, to, you know, give uh, this holiday season to another family that might need some help, uh, please reach out to the Red Committee, or if not, I'll put you in, in contact with also um, Bob who's leading the efforts on behalf of the Red Committee and reach out to the chair as well, Danielle. All right, so those are the events that we have from here to October. If anybody would like to volunteer, donate, we take it all, then we'll be happy to um, have you. And it takes a lot of people um, to make sure that this happens um, every year. So um, that is uh, my report for the events and you know we'll be working on them. Uh, Council, do you guys have any questions? I cannot see you guys. I have a question. Okay. Go ahead, Jimmy. It, uh, do you, is there, you have the funds necessary to do all this, or is there an issue about appropriating? Is it a line item? Anything so some of them are line items in the budget. Some of them were um, could be utilized from the ARPA funds. Um, and some of them are events that have been occurring. Some of them we're going to have to uh, probably do a budget amendment to uh, make sure it happens. Okay. So how we how do you need how do you want to proceed with this? What do you? So we had this. We had discussed for November to be able to approve some of the funding, correct, from ARPA. 
Um, so I'll be, I submitted the proposal and I talked to you guys about it as well. So at least the holiday baskets and Thanksgiving uh, will be there. I'm looking right now, the budget, usually the Veterans Day is part of the budget. If it's not, I'm going to be, um, we're going to have to make a budget amendment to make funds available for that one and Halloween as well. The light up is just literally like we announced we're going to light up the circle and we just announced it and we light it up. So there are money, uh, there's supposed to be money uh, for holiday lights uh, in the budget. So what I'll do is like I'll work through the budget and figure out like we need to make amendments or um, we need to um, move forward some of the items for the November one to um, um, utilize the ARPA funds. I'll get all that to you guys like between this week and next so that way they could be approved by the legislative session. Does that answer your question, Jimmy? Yes, just whatever you need. Just let us know what we should be doing. Thank you so much for, for the support. Luke, Jared? Uh, no additional comments. Thank you, Jared. Luke? Nothing. You guys look go happy. We're going to have lots of candies. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Uh, so now we're moving on to the next item of the agenda. Melissa, can you put the agenda up, please? Okay. Um, item number 11, proposed, item number 12, actually, um, proposed to go into closed session. According to the annotated, annotated code of Maryland, the Maryland Council of the City of Mount Rainier, Maryland will have the statutory authority to, to close the session under general provisions, Article 3-305B. For the reasons of subsection 1, 7, and 8, to discuss the appointment, employment, assignation, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, performance, evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials over whom the public body has jurisdiction, any other matter that affects one or more specific individuals. Item number seven, to consult with counsel to obtain legal advice. Item number eight, to consult with staff, consultants, and other individuals about pending or potential legis legislation. Good night, Mayor. The mayor and city council proposed to go into closed session on Tuesday, October 19, which is today, uh, to discuss legal advice regarding litigation, negotiation, and personnel. So can I um, can I have a motion uh, to go into closed session? So moved. Any seconds? Second. It's been properly moved and second. Any objections? Substant? Nope. So hearing that there is no objections, uh, we're going to be entering to closed session. And you guys were sent a separate link. Uh, council members, uh, go to that um, to that one. And um, Jimmy is going to take lead in reporting back of the summary on next session. Okay. Thank you guys. Five minutes, um, five minutes, 915. If you want five minutes, we'll give you five minutes. Yes. Five minutes, that. Jimmy. I have to put so out the garbage. <laughs> I know that's what I did. I think, so thank you so much for being the community that joined us um, and staff as well for helping us through the meeting. And we will see you uh, next week. Any ARPA um, proposals, please send them on before Friday for the next round of advice from our consultant. All right. Thank you.